Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. We greet you on this, the 25th day of the month of Safar of the year 1445 from my sitting room in my home in the city of San Fernando in Trinidad with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And our topic is Pakistan inflation and beyond. When I arrived in Pakistan at the age of 22, uh, at 21 I left Trinidad to go to Egypt to study at Al-Azhar University. And at 22 I left Egypt after spending one year in Egypt to go to Pakistan to study at the Arimia Institute of Islamic Studies, and that was the best decision I ever took in my entire life. When I arrived in Pakistan, at that time, one US dollar was worth one rupee and 75 paisa. Today, one US dollar is worth more than 300 Pakistani rupees. This is called inflation. As the value of the money goes down, the prices keep on going up. This is called inflation. So you could buy the best mangoes in the world. In Pakistan, you can buy one kilogram, that is 2.2 pounds. A kilogram of mangoes at that time when I was a student for maybe one rupee and 50 paisas. A little less than one US dollar for one kilogram. Today, that same one kilogram of mangoes will be worth maybe, I don't know, 300 rupees or more. But the people's wages have not gone up in a manner that will compensate for the loss of value of money. And Allah has warned in the Quran, three times he said, وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ Do not diminish the value of people's property, people's income, people's wages. Do not diminish it. If you had a hundred rupees and with the 100 rupees you could buy a camel 70 years ago, after some years a hundred rupees would only buy a donkey. And then after some years, a hundred rupees, rupees will only buy a goat. And after some years, a hundred rupees cannot even buy a chicken. Cannot even buy a chicken. The value of people's wealth and income is constantly being diminished. And that is prohibited in the Quran. And that is what's happening in Pakistan. As the value of the Pakistani rupee falls, the masses become poorer and yet poorer. Is that just? Is there anyone who will defend that, that that is normal economic conduct? As the value of the money falls and the prices rise, people become poorer and poorer. And there is a massive transfer of wealth internally from the masses to a predatory elite inside the country who become filthy rich. And there is also a massive transfer of wealth from Pakistan and from the country to an elite outside the country and they become wealthier and wealthier as you become poorer and poorer. This monetary system is assisted by a banking system. 
And the banking system is meant to put a rope around your neck. That they lend you money and they know what is your capacity to repay. They ensure that they lend you more than you have the capacity to repay. And when you have problems in repaying and you are threatened by a default, they let you know what is going to happen to your rupee if you default. Your rupee will go into a slide, <laughs> runaway inflation. It's not 300 rupees for one US, it'll be 3,000 rupees for one US until you reach like Indonesia, 10,000 rupees to one US. Is that the road you want to go on? So the banking system is meant to support and assist the monetary system. And these two combined are meant to perform a certain mission for those who created the monetary system and the banking system, and that is the modern West. They are doing this in order to gain control over you in order to force your submission to them. Pakistan did not win freedom from the West in 1947. India won freedom and became a, India, a free country, but not Pakistan. Pakistan had to remain under the control of the West from day one. And any time a leader emerged, who put Pakistan first, they kill him. And if they couldn't kill him, they put him in jail, like the present one is in jail. That's right. In order for the Western world to take control and maintain control over Pakistan, in order to force Pakistan into submission. So tomorrow, when a Pax Judaica replaces Pax America, Americana, the the Yankee puppy dogs in Pakistan, who now worship the United States at a U.S. altar, these Yankee puppy dogs will now become puppy dogs of Pax Judaica, and they will deliver the same loyalty to the state of Israel that they're now delivering to Washington. That is the, that is the goal that they seek to achieve. How do the people of Pakistan respond at this time when inflation is driving the people into destitution? People have to turn off their refrigerator. That's right. For a certain number of hours to save on the electricity bill. People have to turn off their fans in blazing heat turn off the fans to save on the electricity bill. Is this not slavery? When would you wake up? How do we respond? What has the Darul Ulum offered as an answer? Is there any Darul Ulum in Pakistan which is responding to the dangers of inflation and guiding the people from the pa from the Quran how to respond? Is there any Maulana Mufti Sheikh? If there is, please send me his lecture that I can listen to him. My Urdu is not so good, but I can still listen and understand. If there is such a scholar in Pakistan who is going to the Quran and the Hadith to respond to this predicament of inflation in Pakistan driving people into poverty and destitution, then send me his link so I can honor that man. And if there's none, then what can we do? We have to create a new generation of scholars. The first thing we have to do is that our people must re re repeat this pledge that we are going to remain ab faithful to absolute truth in the Quran. We look for answers to our problems from the Quran. Allah says about the Quran that it is Tibian and Likulishai. The Quran explains all things. So the Quran must explain the subject of inflation.
And therefore, because of the guidance from the Quran, we have to wage a struggle in Pakistan to make dinar and dirham legal tender in Pakistan. But I have lectured on this subject for 25 years now, so everybody knows this. I don't have to explain it anymore except to schoolboys. We have to wage a struggle for dinar and dirham to be recognized as legal tender in Pakistan. The rupee will still remain in the market. But people can now do business using dinar and dirham. Every laborer can demand that his salary be paid in dinar and dirham. A dinar, of course, is a gold coin, and a dirham is a, is a silver coin. Secondly, the Quran has prohibited riba. So we have to make a, get a pledge from all the politicians, from all the government, that no more borrowing money on interest. No more. Stop it. Once you make that pledge, ensure that no government in Pakistan can dare borrow money on interest because we will, we will hang you if you do that. Then what do you do with the existing loans? The answer, the moral law is the highest law. And uh, oppression cannot be existing. Cannot, and the loans that have to be repaid with interest is oppression. So you have to take your bullet, bite the bullet and say, we will no longer pay any more interest on loans. That's it. We're stopping interest on loans. A unilateral declaration on the part of the people. No more interest on loans to be paid. Do what you want. It's not default, it's more than that. We reject, we reject having to pay any interest on loans. And we are pre prepared to stand for it regardless of the price we have to pay. But whatever capital we, let, we borrowed, the capital sum we pledged to repay. But we will repay the capital sum based on our capacity to pay. This is the way to respond to the present predicament of inflation. Now then, <laughs> What else should we do to bring relief to the poor? Immediately. Immediately we have to ensure that the price of food comes down. How do we bring down the price of food so people can eat? Answer. Pakistan produces food an abundance of food. But the government must now make it illegal for any of that food to ever be exported outside of Pakistan. If you want to live in Brussels and you want to eat basmati rice, you're going to have to plant it yourself. Because we're not selling it to you. We're not selling it to you. We're not selling to you any of the food that we produce. You will have to go and produce your own food. You can take your Mercedes Benz and pick it, carry it in the, in the field and plant. <laughs> we are not going to plant food for you to eat. We are going to plant food for our people to eat. Well then, what is going to happen to the price of food? When you have this massive amount of food being produced in the country and you cannot sell it abroad where you can get a higher price. Answer, you have to make smuggling treason. If we catch you, if we catch you smuggling food out of the country, we will put you to death. Deterrent punishment. Number two, we have to prohibit hoarding of food. Yes, you can keep food in your home for security. That's your dom domestic security. But you can't hoard food in order to be, able to be able to cash in when prices are high. If we catch you with food being hoarded, we're going to put you to death because this is treason. And when you make these laws, you've got to enforce these laws without discrimination. So then where will the farmer sell his food? Answer, 
the food has to be the food grain has to be sold otherwise it will spoil and when he puts it on the market to, to sell it the price of the market will be what the people can afford to buy so the poor man going to the market we say this is all I can afford. And that is what is going to bring down the price of food. Because the farmers who are producing the food cannot sell the food except in this market. And in this market, this is the buying power of the people. And that will bring down the price of food. And Pakistani people will have food to eat. If you are a politician and you have something more than peanuts in your head, then listen to me. You have to do this now. Prohibit all food from being exported out of Pakistan, regardless of the consequences, so that the people of Pakistan will have enough food to eat and the poor can have food on their table. But then there's another problem, and that is of energy. The people have now become hooked to energy and you need energy for your refrigerator, you need energy for your fans, for your lighting and so on. You need energy for your rickshaw and your taxis and so on. And the answer is there in Surah to the Kaf. And that is solar energy. Surah to the Kaf has pointed to solar energy. And Pakistan has an abundance of solar energy. So now then, the rich in Pakistan, those who can afford, they have to now come forward to fund, to help it. The those who are poor and cannot afford to pay their electricity bills, they must be provided with solar panels so that they can get energy for the refrigerator, energy for the fans, energy for the lightings, and for which they don't have to pay an electricity bill. The, the rickshaws should be running on solar panels so that they don't have to consume fuel, expensive fuel, to run the rickshaw. These are, these are my responses, initial responses to the subject of Pakistan and inflation and beyond. And I can only pray that our scholars will wake up and turn to the Quran and the Sunnah to provide guidance to the people at this critical time. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.